We are joined now by three of the people who were inside that school board meeting. All of them stepped in to try and stomp the gunman. Ginger Littleton and Jerry Register are both school board members. Bill Husfeldt is the superintendent of the Bay County School District. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning, morning Meredith. You know, I've looked at that video now several times, and I find it frightening and surreal. You people lived it. How are you feeling today besides just very grateful to be alive? That's number one. I think that we are, Meredith, we are so happy to be alive. Life means a lot more today than it did yesterday, probably. And I'm so proud of Mike Jones. He was truly the hero. And uh, Mike Jones deserves a lot of credit. Yeah, Mike Jones is, is the security he, guard who uh, shot this man. Who, he's, he's not just a security guard, though. He's a, he he's a retired detective from the police department. He, he literally saved our lives. If he, he hadn't did. come in when he did, we wouldn't be here with each other this That's morning. That's true. Yeah, well, Bill, take me back to yesterday. This was a, a regular school board meeting. Suddenly this man comes up that none of you knew to the front of the room. He draws that circle, puts the V in the middle of it, then turns on you with a gun. What is going through your mind at that point, Bill? Well, at first I thought he was upset because we've been talking about head and technology, and I thought, what is he upset about? I, you know, I really, you know, I've, we've had people come in and be frustrated about something, but then he turned around with that gun in his hand, and it just totally changed. I didn't know what was going on at that point. Uh, he started rambling on and told people to get out, and, and it was just, um, you know, I, I haven't timed it, but it seemed like a lot longer than it actually was, I'm sure. But it was it was the most surreal thing I've ever been a part of. Yeah, Meredith, it, uh, the gun, excuse me, the gun made a difference. When he turned around from that wall, the whole... Uh, situation changed. You know, I had dealt with parents in the past as administrator, but when the, when never before with a gun, it changed everything. Well, he, he did, as Bill pointed out, he told all the women to get out, and Ginger, you left, and then you made a decision to come back into the room. Why? What? Why did you change your mind? Well, I... I turned back around to check on what was happening and at that point he had moved up onto the the dais where the board members were sitting and my guys were lined up like no. ducks in a pond no. uh, and so I could either walk away and try to live with myself because I knew something bad was going to happen uh, or I could try to defend delay somehow or other divert um, no. hoping that no. the cavalry would come soon my guys had three ring binders and pencils to protect themselves, so um, I whacked him with the purse, hoping I could get him to drop the gun. Obviously, that didn't work, um, and I did not have a plan B, which was probably not... He said, you stupid blank, and I think the you stupid part, I thought at that point, probably you're right. I was pretty stupid. Yeah, and he's pointing the gun at you she at that tried. point. Yeah, I understand she tried, but yes. he's pointing the gun at you at that point. Uh, did you yes. just assume this is it? Yes, I did. I think I think I did as well, but at that point there's nothing you can do. I mean, I was already committed and and so probably should have been committed, but um, mm -hmm. there was nothing to be done. So it, it wasn't terror or anything like that. It was like, oh well, you know, here yeah. we are. She did it because she cares about us. I mean, we've That's got a really true. good board. We work well together, and, and, and she is trying to help us like we were trying to help ourselves. Well, fortunately, he didn't just, shoot to Ginger. Ginger. Excuse me. You go ahead. Yes, that was a very good thing. I, I appreciated that. It would be nice to see the sun come up this morning. That's true. When Ginger was laying on the floor, I thought, well, this is it. Because, uh, she attempted something. And his, the gun was, she was laying by me at the, on the, behind the board desk, and the gun was right over her. And that's when it became very scary. Yeah, but, but after Ginger left, what struck me about Jerry, about you and Bill, is how calm you both remained as you tried to basically talk this man off the ledge. You said, look, if your wife lost a job, Jerry, you said, I'll try to help her get one. Bill, you said to the, the gunman, I'll take full responsibility for this as superintendent. Let everybody else go, even though you knew that this was not going to end well, Bill. Yeah, it, it, he had that look in his eyes, and I, I believe I, that, you said I've it, seen anger before, and he almost had like a grimace, a smile. I mean, he he had planned to do this, and we knew it wasn't going to end well. And uh, and and I and I don't say this facetiously. I mean this. If I was going to die. I knew where I was going to go, and I was very comfortable knowing that, not wanting that to happen, but I knew I would, I would go to heaven. And so um, 
I, I just didn't want to see all of us. I mean, that guy had a mission. He'd already told us he was going to die. He told us he was going to kill himself, basically. And he was going to try to do the same to us. And it, it's just, you know, I feel so sorry for his family and, and what they're going through right now. It's just a terrible tragedy. Married, if I was talking for my life, I never have been as afraid in my life as I was yesterday. And when I asked him, what, what are you doing? What's the problem? And he began to tell about his wife. And I said, look here, man, I'm a pretty good guy. Uh, I've been married to my wife 40 years. I was real sincere when I was saying this. And I said, I've got tr two great kids. I really don't want to die at this time. And Bill and I, we, became, we continued to talk with him. And uh, just for time's sake, for time's sake. But as time drew closer, we knew, we knew that he knew the authorities were coming, and that's when he came closer to the desk, and that was beginning when he was bringing the gun up, and that's when I dove to the side, and all the other board members, including Bill, went down, and it's just a miracle this morning that this man sitting to my left, a great friend of mine, is here because he was almost point blank. Point blank. With yeah, you, the shooting of the gun. You got to wonder whether the gunman either was just a lousy shot, or maybe he didn't really intend yeah. to kill you. That the whole idea was that he was going to be don't. killed by whoever Please came don't. in. Please. That was his scenario. I'm going to kill. He continued to say that uh, I'm going to die, and you are too. He right. said that several different times. I, 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 I will go to my grave believing that those bullets were blocked by a greater power. I mean, it, it's just uh, obvious to me, and and I just. I, I'm, we're just very thankful to be here. I mean, it, Meredith, you, you just don't know the sense of relief that I'm sure we all share. Yes. Just to even be able to be here and talk with you. Well, we. Our families and friends are so elated. Uh, we had emails, we had phone calls last night. Uh, what a day. What a day. That's the understatement of the interview. Thank you, Jerry, Bill, and Ginger, so much. We are so glad that you are sure. with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Meredith. You have a great day. You too.